Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the monthly Livable Neighborhoods meeting. And um, I did have someone ask me about introductions. Um, the other day, we normally do introductions in the room. Uh, it is something that I value, um, but we do have a lot of people on and um, because we are virtual, we've shortened our time, our normal meeting time. So I don't know that we would get through everyone <laughs> in a timely manner. So what I would ask you all to do is to please share your name and maybe who you represent or um, neighborhood group you represent or agency in the chat. Um, that way we can kind of get a sense of who is here and um, people can make connections if they need to. Um, feel free to leave your contact information if you're um, sharing information or if you uh, want people to get in contact with you. Um, and we'll just do it that way for now uh, so that we can jump into our agenda. And I believe the first thing is our uh, KCK Police Department uh, for an update. And I believe... Um, I believe I saw KCKPD on, but I'm not sure who's giving the update today. Saw Chief Oakman on, so. Oh, okay, well, great. Chief Oakman, would you like to give an update? Yeah, I, I believe uh, Deputy Chief Waldeck will be giving that update. Okay, great, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I was uh, I was waiting to make sure um, how this was going to go. So um, we don't have a whole lot of an update. Um, we are hiring. We just started a lateral academy with three officers, um, two from I believe Leewood and one from Albuquerque, um, and then uh, we also started a another academy class. Uh, traditional academy class. So you'll be seeing some, uh, seeing them in the academy. And we also have a class in PTO. So if you see two man cars that um, may indicate there is a trainer and a trainee. So we have that. And then our summer cadet program is still uh, going, uh, getting close to wrapping up uh, with our summer cadets, which that's gone very well. And a lot, they've been working on a lot of our summer projects. Um, and we are also wrapping up ICON. ICON has been the, uh, a, the grant and overtime program that has been impacting crime in our neighborhoods is what ICON stands for. That grant will be wrapping up towards the end of the year. Um, and that's where we have officers in micro hotspots throughout the community on overtime and the overtime is grant funded. So that is winding down. This will be the last year for that grant. So it will be winding, winding down towards the fall. Um, we are still uh, doing the DDAX, uh, data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety along Central Avenue. And that we're coming up on the end of our five years on that and we'll be looking to maybe tweak that a little bit based on the data for the, um, what area it covers. Uh, that's really all I have for an update unless anyone has a question about something. All right, have a good morning. Thank you so much. Um, and if anyone does have any follow-up questions, I know the police department needs to head off in a little bit, but feel free to put them in the chat and we can follow up with any questions that anybody has. Are there any questions currently? Um, let's see. I do see a, a um, question in the chat about the ID program. We are working on getting that program rolled out. That's the city ID program. And Andrea, I was going to get with you to see if we could get on the agenda next um, for the next livable neighborhoods to have the presentation given here that we also gave a standing committee. Um, and so I can email you that, but the city ID program will be rolling out in the next few weeks. And that is a program that will help unsheltered um, the unsheltered population within our city be able to get an ID verified um, through us that will help them get their state ID. So the um, process to get a state ID requires several very specific documents and a lot of our unsheltered population has lost those documents and can't get resources for housing 
and fund or uh, benefits, bank accounts. Gain, some of them have bank accounts they can't get their own money out of because they don't have the proper identification. So the city ID program will help them do that and hopefully help them um, become sheltered and, and not be homeless. So um, next month we'll have community policing come on and give the full presentation. And hopefully um, in the next two weeks, you'll start seeing some media uh, about that program being rolled out. Great, thank you. Any other questions? I'm trying to catch any that I see, um, but I don't see any in the chat. So great, thank you so much for the thank update. You. Thank you for that question. And next on the agenda is going to be a presentation by Monica and, sorry, Monica, I'm looking for you. I'm trying to do too much at one time. Um, <laughs> um, by Monica at Groundworks NRG. And I'm gonna make sure that you have the ability to share your screen. So you are ready to go, Monica, if you are ready. Hi, Andrea. Uh, I don't think it'll be necessary for any screen sharing. I don't really have a presentation or anything. Uh, let me just make sure that Donna Guerra is on the call. She's also working at Groundwork Energy. She's gonna take five minutes to talk about some of her programming and give an introduction to herself. And then I will go ahead and take it after her. Donna, are you here with us? Hello. All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Donna Guerra, the uh, Walk Wico Community Coordinator for Groundwork NRG. I've, I'm about three months into the position. Uh, it's been very rewarding to be part of such a great organization. And I'm learning a lot about the role and you know about all the great work that you all are doing in Wyandotte County. Thank you for this platform to share a little bit about the programs that I'm working on with Groundwork NRG. I'll try to make it short and sweet. I don't have a presentation, but more of just a highlight of some of the projects that I'm currently working on in the community. There's still so many people that I've yet to meet, uh, which is why this program is uh, very important. Uh, and this platform is very important for me to share these. So just bear with me. Um, I'd love to at some point connect with you guys. Um, I'll try to get all of your contact information from the chat and, and share some of our uh, program updates and flyers. But essentially community mobilization and collaboration is at the forefront of everything that I'm doing. So it's gonna be essential and vital that I get with you all um, if I have any hopes of making these programs sustainable in the community. So uh, I'm basically at the moment, I'm working on expanding some of our existing physical activity programming uh, in the Northeast KCK, as well as the larger Wyandotte County area. One of those programs is Walk with the Doc. If you're not familiar, essentially it's a national program uh, that's doctor led um, and they provide about a 15 minute uh, presentation on a health topic. It's a really good way to get people moving in the community, uh, you know, and refocusing on restoring health. So I'm leading that chapter on the Kansas City, Kansas side. And we've started this program about a month ago uh, in Fisher Park. So uh, there are monthly walks that we're intentionally hoping to get more residents from KCK involved in the process, as well as getting, you know, you folks on this call interested in collaborating and partnering with us on this vision for this program. So uh, I'd like to hear some feedback if you guys are interested in attending these, I'm happy to you know, connect you on our social media as well as provide you with those physical flyers. Um, aside from Walk with the Doc, we're also hosting a neighborhood walks, right? I understand a lot of churches and community organizations already host their own walks. My vision for this program is to make it a one big encapsulated program where everybody can come and walk, right? whether that's doing a lunch walk, uh, you know, taking a lunch break or, uh, you know, getting more people involved in the community, we bring it to them kind of thing. So just really brainstorming on what that looks like. Obviously the whole role of this uh, and the whole mission from Groundwork NRG is health equity, right? It's always at the forefront of everything that we do. So creating more sustainable programs that really help emphasize 
you know, addressing some of those health concerns is, is really my niche. Um, aside from the walking programs, in this role, I'm also collaborating with uh, other key stakeholders in the community on what we call Come Walk With Us, right? And these are essentially auditing tools that we use alongside with the neighborhood associations to basically address some of those infrastructure concerns in the community, things like, you know, park and recreational accessibility, walking, um, city ordinances, safety, things like that, that a lot of you on this call are interested in. And so uh, along with other members of Groundwork NRG, we're really hoping to, you know, one neighborhood at a time, so to speak, uh, start advocating for those, for those infrastructure needs in that community. Um, aside from that, uh, just eager to, you know, get moving and do more of the grassroots stuff. Uh, recently, we launched a second park survey on the Groundwork NRG website. I would highly encourage you all to check it out. It's a 10 minute survey that really will also help, again, uh, create more opportunities for folks to use parks and recreational activities. So help us out in completing that survey. Uh, I'll also put it on the chat. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I appreciate the platform. And again, my name is Donna Guerra and I hope to connect with you all in the future. Monica, take it away. All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Monica Probst Medeiros, for those of you that do not know, and I'm also a Groundwork NRG um, staff member, I'm the Economic Development and Sustainability Coordinator, and a big portion of my job is to provide community trainings on a variety of different topics around the environment, uh, economic development tools and opportunities and resources and different things like that. I'm actually recognizing some of your faces from some of the trainings that I've given before. So it's really good to see you again. Uh, those trainings are why I'm here today and what I want to let you know about um, so that I can see more of your beautiful faces, attending some trainings and getting some knowledge that maybe you may not have had or that you're building upon. Um, one of those trainings that's really important to me and that is really cool that uh, we have been able to provide thus far is our climate and disaster preparedness trainings. So within those training sessions, you will learn about very specific uh, climate, natural and other disaster or emergency uh, risks that Kansas City, Kansas and Wyandotte County specifically is vulnerable to how to prepare for them, um, how to create plans to prepare for them. And we will also distribute free disaster preparedness kits enough for two people for three days. So if you've attended one of those trainings in the past, you have uh, completed an entry and exit survey and received a free disaster preparedness kit. We have dozens of those kits left. Um, maybe even more than dozens. Uh, so we are always looking for opportunities to be able to distribute those to people in our community, not only in Northeast Kansas City, Kansas, which is our service area, but in Wyandotte County generally. Um, and we also offer other community training. So some of you may have attended our land and acquisition training where we uh, kind of demystify some of the process as it relates to uh, going through the land bank to receive, retrieve property or uh, to purchase property as an individual, as a neighborhood group, um, or just as a community member in general. We talk about how to uh, development, how to kind of one-on-one -on -one training um, of how to get started on any development project, whether, like I said, it's a neighborhood level project that you'd like to do for community green space, or whether you're thinking about building a dream home. We collaborate with a lot of different housing and development professionals to provide this training among other trainings. We have other trainings in the work right now about a lot of different uh, varieties and topics. And the most important reason why I like to come to these meetings um, and connect with people who have either taken a training in the past or who wish to take a training is because I'm constantly looking for more opportunities to hear from the community members, things that you all need to know, resources that you need to be connected to, processes that you want demystified, um, or just general points of confusion maybe that you've had with some community development topics or engagements, um, different things so that I can do my best to perform the research, to make the phone calls, to make the connections with whoever that I need to, to connect you all with any information that you need to 
uh, improve your quality of life, to improve your neighborhoods, to improve your homes, uh, what have you. So I'm going to put my information in the chat. And if you're interested in taking either a disaster preparedness training and receiving the free disaster preparedness kit, if you're interested in land acquisition and development trainings, learning about all things development from the ground up, um, from site assessments, building costs, how to make a budget, all of those things. Um, that's also a training that you can participate in. And if you would like to offer me any feedback on anything else, like I said, community development related that you would like to know more about, please feel free to give me all of those suggestions. And that is all I have. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, are there any questions for Monica or Donna? Okay, we've got a quiet group today. Not enough coffee yet. Um, okay, so next on the agenda is uh, the mayor's office, and I believe the mayor is on the call today. Good morning, everyone. Um, good, morning. I, good morning. I'll just I'm going to give you a brief update. I know we've been receiving quite a few complaints through our office regarding uh, trash and recycling pickup, uh, obviously for waste management. Um, this is a continuing problem over the past several years with waste management missed uh, assignments. Um, I will say they can continually have a difficulty in hiring and retaining drivers. Uh, their drivers, when they after they work for them, they are offered, there, there's a, quite a bit of demand for uh, people with CDL licenses. Um, so they are now, actually offering a $7,500 signing bonus. If you come on, if you have a CDL and you can drive uh, $7,500 uh, just to sign on. If you know anyone who's a driver who's looking for a change, uh, tell them to check out waste management. I, I will tell you that it's very important again for to call 311 or go online to 311 to report a missed uh, pickup uh, that uh, allows us faster recovery and accountability. Uh, we, we monitor those calls, and that actually is part of, um, you know, we are fining them for their misses according to their contract, not really a fine, but we're assessing them. You know, they're supposed to meet certain standards, numbers. If they're missing it, then we keep count of that, and that goes uh, uh, against them. They, they are responsible for that. So very important that you use 311. Um, and, you know, I will say that they have some real difficulties that, you know, our contract is probably the best contract that any city could have gotten with Deffenbar Waste Management. For instance, most places would require or provide a, a large bin for recycling and for the trash, and that can be picked up by the automated arm. And that means they only have to have one person on crew that is the driver who can just go from house to house, pick up and it dumps automatically. We, we allow anything to be picked up. No other contract that I know of in the area uh, provides for that. So there's no mistaking, they would rather not have our contract at this point, but they've got it and we have to hold them accountable for it. Um, but again, please go to 311, report any misses and that really helps us to have that, that recorded. Um, I will say also after the recent, well, not recent now, but about a month ago, we had a pretty good storm out in the Piper area. Um, not sure really what that was. It seems to me after I looked at some of the damage, it might've been a little tornadic because uh, it looked like there were some things twisted rather than straight line winds. But we had some people who had quite a bit of debris come down. We did our best to try and help. We don't normally do that, but there was so much, we felt an emergency situation, we needed to do that. So we're also, uh, going to be looking at perhaps an ordinance that would allow the commission to step in and say, in, a, in another situation like this, a major storm event, to help us get rid of the debris faster and at less cost and allow homeowners to clean up their properties quicker, neighborhoods to clean up faster, uh, an emergency burn permit. But that has some concerns. You know, it's gone through, it's going to health department. We have some concerns about air quality uh, when you allow that. So uh, this is going to be on standing committee. Please uh, take a look, keep an eye on that standing committee agenda. Uh, you might want to weigh in on that. So having said that, that's, I appreciate your time. 
Great, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for the mayor? <laughs> okay, great, thank you. That's, that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> we are quiet tonight, thank you today. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the health department. So I believe I saw Kay on. Um, Kay, yes. do you have some updates for us? Sure, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, we do have uh, updates from the health department. Uh, unfortunately, they are not going in the direction that we would like to see. Um, our seven day rolling average for cases is increasing. Uh, currently, we're seeing uh, about 35 cases a day. Uh, about a month ago, that was down, um, I believe, about 11 or 12 cases a day. So uh, things are definitely going up. Um, currently, 38.1% uh, of residents have had at least one dose of the uh, vaccination and 33% are fully vaccinated. So we still have quite a hill to climb. Um, of particular note um, is that we are seeing almost exclusively Delta variant uh, in our uh, positive cases. We, were, we now have 85 cases right now. We are doing a sequ a sequencing uh, to determine what specific type of uh, uh, positive case we are seeing. And we are uh, virtually at 100% Delta variant. So um, that is of great concern to us because the, uh, Delta, the Delta variant, as you all know, is much more aggressive. Um, I will say on a positive note, uh, yesterday at the uh, Kmart site, uh, we saw um, probably the largest daily increase in first doses uh, that we have seen in months. So, um, you know, it, whether it is a combination, we think it's probably a combination of concern about the Delta variant, as well as the incentives uh, that we are offering um, to come in and get vaccinated. Um, I also want to mention that we are seeing uh, a concerning uptick in cases among um, our child population, um, particularly for the zero to 11 uh, age, we are seeing hospitalizations. Um, and then our 12 to 12 to 15, we also are seeing an uptick as well. So what we would say is that if you're talking to folks, if you're talking to grown folks that are not vaccinated, um, at this point, our, uh, the kids that are under age 12 are sitting ducks and we have to look at it that way. They haven't you know, that the rest of us can make the decision of whether or not we want to be vaccinated, but there is nothing to offer our, uh, our young kids. So to the extent that we as adults can be very aggressive in uh, getting vaccinated, uh, for every person that we vaccinate, we're, you know, we're that much closer to protecting our children. So, um, you know, if, if you can tell folks to think of it that way, if, you know, if you don't want to do it for yourself, we, you know, we are just not at a position at this point where we have a vaccination that is available to that age group. So um, that's all I really have today. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Does anyone have any questions? I just have a question related to, do you have data around um, the Delta variant and its impact or information on those that are vaccinated? Um, I know that your office has identified a few, 
few close friends of mine um, that are confirmed, but they have also been vaccinated. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't get myself unmuted. Um, um, okay, I am so sorry. Um, first of all, let me let me just address the the breakthrough cases. Um, as you all know, uh, these vaccines have been determined to be approximately ninety five percent effective. The converse of that is they are, we are going to see five percent in we are going to see roughly an incident of five percent where those who are vaccinated will still get the virus. Right now, uh, we are looking at four point three percent of folks that get vaccinated that are still ending up with the virus. So we are right in that that 5% window that the pharmace pharmaceutical companies said we would be at. Their vaccines are, are roughly 95%. So that means 5%, we're, you know, there, are, there is going to be that 5% uh, breakthrough rate. Um, we have not uh, gotten sequencing back yet from those who are uh, uh, from our breakthrough cases. Um, we will uh, probably um, sometime in the next week, we'll know specifically what those are, but I don't think we have that information available. Ashley, you can, um, you can tell me if that is not the case, but I don't think those breakthrough cases, we have sequencing on those yet, do we? Not as far as I know. I think it's really important to note that across the country, 99.5% of hospitalizations are people who are unvaccinated. So I think we have to recognize that the vaccine is still extremely effective uh, in reducing the severity of cases when people do contract COVID. Um, it's not 100% guarantee, but it certainly is a very good way of um, mitigating some of the uh, extreme symptoms that can occur through COVID. So uh, please, please, please help us get more people vaccinated in our community. Thank you, Ashley. You took that. You took my next comment right out of my mouth. So absolutely. Uh, even when we see those breakthrough cases, it's, you know, it's like the flu shot. You know, if you get the flu shot, but you end up with the flu, um, you know, you're going to get a much milder case of the flu. So please, 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 um, let's still be as aggressive as we can in getting folks vaccinated and then let's protect our kids as well. Awesome. And the only other question that I had was we, um, I believe my information is correct that um, the, the events that have taken place with the Kansas City, Kansas um, public schools have been the most successful vaccination events um, held to date. Um, does the health department plan to continue to partner with the school? I know there's one at Harmon next week, but how do we incentivize to the great, to the great work of KCKPS and their marketing and coming up with all of those things to get a, young folks and also families vaccinated um, because the lines were ridiculous there is what I heard. And so um, that's really great. And so kudos to KCKPS, but also how do we have the success, other successful events within the community like that as well? Um, you are absolutely right. Uh, the Kansas City, Kansas School District has done a phenomenal job, and I, I wish I could think of a word even better than that. They have done a phenomenal job at marketing their events, at making sure that they look under every rock in terms of how they can get the word out. Um, we have also um, incentivized those uh, events heavily. Um, for instance, uh, at the event that's coming up uh, this Tuesday at J.C. Harmon, and that will be from five to eight o'clock, um, 
We are going to have, um, we're going to have a food truck, dental truck. Um, we are going to have an ice cream truck there. We are going to be giving out a $100. Uh, we're going to have raffles for $100. We're going to have raffles for $500. Um, the kids are going to get, uh, whether it's a, a, case, uh, a KC Cosmic Bowl gift card or AMC gift card, uh, we have other gift cards available. We're going to be offering uh, iP uh, AirPods. So we're going to do whatever we have to do to make it, you know, excuse the expression, sexy enough um, that folks want to come out. Uh, and really, that's that's what we have to do. We have to invest in these events. We can't just say, you know, you know, we we've got buckets of vaccine, yeah, you know, a vaccine. Please come get vaccinated. That just doesn't work. So we're trying to meet meet folks where they are, where you know, and and how they think. So we really are. Uh, we, we're trying to translate the success that we're seeing in KCK to the other school districts. Um, our next event will be in Bonner Edward, Edwardsville. Um, so we're hoping we'll be able to use the template. And, and I will say, I am calling this at this point, I am calling this the KCK template um, because they have been just that aggressive in their marketing. Uh, and I was very, very happy that they came to us and said, we need money for incentives. What can you offer us? And we, and we have that. We have that funding. And, you know, and kudos to them for saying, can you help us make this attractive? And, uh, and we were able to get together and do that. Uh, and that's what we're going to have to do across Wyandotte County. Great, thank you. And kudos to Edwin on the call, who we know is getting that word out. <laughs> yes, uh, it's not just me, but my team, they have been doing a great job. And I wanna give also kudos to uh, Kay and their team. I mean, the um, collaboration has been great. And also Elizabeth Morris, who works in our health services department. So, you know, it's just putting your minds together and thinking about ways to think outside the box, just as Kay explained. And Kay, you forgot to mention that we have a drawing for a brand new car too, right? <laughs> uh, it might be a Hot Wheel at this point, but that's okay. <laughs> details, details, right, Edwin? <laughs> that's right. Just kidding, y'all. Please don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it is official. There is not a drawing for a car, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions for Kay? Okay, um, we will move on to um, the sheriff. And I see Sheriff Ash is on. Morning, everybody. Edwin, three board members just fell out when you said that for the you know, school district. <laughs> I know. So, your phone's going to be ringing, probably. Uh, I just want to say this morning, we are hiring. We are hiring everything from record clerks to juvenile intake and assessment, uh, intake specialists to juvenile care workers in the new juvenile center. Uh, detention deputies. Uh, we've got openings just about everywhere. So check us out on our uh, Facebook page. Check us out on the Unified Government uh, jobs listing. The weekly jobs listing just came out this morning a little while ago. It, there's a lot of jobs available here, but uh, and we're certainly on there with several of them. Uh, with regard to the COVID, I will say we've experienced that here in the detention center. Uh, starting a couple of weeks ago, we we're on an internal facility lockdown right now, if you will, which means we're just not moving inmates around from pod to pod like we normally would. We're leaving them in place. That started Tuesday morning, and next Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, we will test everyone in the facility and see where we are. We believe we've isolated it and gotten it stopped, but... Um, it, it's still present. We've had a few staff members 
and maybe uh, 14, 15 or so currently uh, inmates. Maybe it's a little lower than that today because some are testing negative and, and clearing, but uh, we're doing our part to uh, stop it. But we're responsible for some of those uh, daily numbers that uh, Kay was talking about. And that's really all I have. If you have questions, put them in the chat or give me a call. Thanks. Great, thank you. Any questions? Um, it says, I do have a question. Uh, if you could speak to the 18 to 20 year old recruit strategy specialist yes so the correction specialist position uh, people who are minimum of 18 years of age and under 21 years of age which is the minimum age for uh, sworn deputy position we are hiring them into correction specialist uh, positions and so they essentially go through the same pre-employment screening process we bring them on board and they do pretty much everything that the detention deputies do, except they are obviously don't meet the legal requirement for being able to carry a firearm. So we don't have them undertake any duties where uh, might require them to be a, uh, have a firearm or carry a firearm. So uh, we still give them the training and we still they still get all of the training that detention deputies get in preparation and then if they stay around here till they're 21 and wish to transition over to a deputy position, why then we have that uh, pathway for them. I hope that answers your question. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Sheriff Ash. And next on our list is DA Dupree. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to see everyone. Uh, just by way of a quick update, I just returned from the National District Attorneys Association Conference, um, where I was apparently appointed to the executive board for the National District Attorneys. And one of the biggest issues that um, I think we're hearing across the country is two things. One, hiring, which the uh, sheriff just hit on. Uh, we are dealing with a lot of lawyers leaving to private practice because they are able to give... Uh, quite a few thousands of dollars as a uh, leaving your government job to join the private sector. Uh, and so many offices are struggling there. We are down uh, just a couple attorneys, definitely not as bad as across the, the country. And so if you know any good trial attorneys who uh, would like to join the team, feel free to let them know. I know colleagues who are literally down six to a dozen attorneys. And so Wyandotte County is uh, doing very well with being able to keep our attorneys. And so, and even uh, when they go, a lot of times it's right across the street to uh, the city government, you know, they pay a little bit more money. So I can't, I can't complain too much. As long as they're still in the dot, I still show them some love. So that's, that's the first thing. And so I'm excited to be able to represent Kansas City, Kansas on the national level there. The uh, second thing that uh, is real big right now is dealing with the underlying uh, issues concerning crime. And I'm, I was proud to really talk about all of the treatment courts that we have here in Wyandotte County, celebrating the, the uh, opening of the Veterans Court here in Wyandotte County uh, with Judge Henry celebrating that just last month. So uh, as well as our drug court and behavior health court. Uh, so on a national level, we are um, really out front uh, and ahead of the game in concern of a lot of these things concerning criminal justice progress. Uh, and so that's, that's a really good thing. It's also important to note that uh, Judge Russell and uh, a team from Wyandotte County will be a part of the first mental health uh, statewide conference uh, put on by uh, judges and uh, the governor is a part of that as well as the Supreme Court to really talk about behavior health court and the ways that we can really focus in on uh, treating those folks who are in custody that have mental health uh, concerns uh, and to try to deal with those underlying issues. So uh, those are some of the things that we're dealing with. 
Lastly, I'll state that we have multiple interns going on this summer in our office uh, from high school and college. And so if you see them around the courthouse, uh, just say, hey, uh, if you have folks who desire to get into the criminal justice system on the positive side of things, feel free to have them reach out to Jonathan Carter at our office. And uh, we want to make sure that we expose our young people to the criminal justice system in a positive way so that the their only imprint will not be what they see on the news or any negative contact that they or their family have had. And so we are excited uh, about that. Um, Lastly, I, I will say that I have been contacted by several of your organizations to, to come out and to speak, and we're excited about uh, jumping back into that. I told Jonathan to reach out to everyone. I do not know how many of your organizations or, or uh, uh, associations are back having meetings. And so if you are back having meetings, whether it's in the park, if it's virtual or whatever you're doing, please let us know. We definitely are not trying to miss anyone and not uh, communicate, but it's hard to know who's doing what now. And so if you are back meeting virtual or otherwise, please reach out and, and let my office know so that we can make sure we inform you on a consistent basis on what's happening in our office. Uh, that is all that I have at this time. There were some murders that happened in Wyandotte County. We are we have filed charges on those. Uh, most recently was the Ashley Jones case. Uh, that charge was first degree murder that was charged just yesterday uh, and was in the news. And so we are uh, pursuing that and that will be uh, dealt with through our office. As others come, I will continue to let you guys know, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions or concerns uh, that we can help with. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, DA Dupree, appreciate it. Um, next on the agenda is the fire department. I saw that um, John was on early. Hey Good morning. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, basically, like the other public safety uh, speakers today, the fire department, uh, we've been going through a lot of turnover ourselves, a lot of retirements. Uh, so there are some positions coming open. There will be a paramedic trainee application process um, for four of those positions. It should be posted sometime in early August. Uh, we just started an EMT one. Those have been pretty successful programs, what it does is it uh, allows us to hire somebody in, send them off to paramedic school, and then there are hours for the department since it's very difficult to acquire paramedics for most public safety departments. Uh, there's also a general um, firefighter paramedic or EMT application process that will start up uh, sometime in August also. So if you know any uh, Kids getting out of high school um, that would uh, be interested in that, make sure they watch the city's website and apply for that. Uh, the 2021 fireworks season ended officially on July 5th. I'm working on the report I'm supposed to present to the Public Safety Commission uh, on August 23rd. And um, I didn't see any major problems this year. I have one issue that I need to address and probably uh, request an ordinance change on that. And I'll explain that in that meeting there. We are getting a few complaints about people still shooting off fireworks. So if you have neighbors that are um, having problems with that, make sure they call 911 if it's actually occurring. Uh, if it's some kind of a persistent problem, they can call my office directly and uh, I'll deal with it uh, that way. Um, and then summer's about half over, I guess, or a little over half over. So make sure everybody that's put up those pools um, above ground or in ground have the proper fencing around them and you're watching those kids around them. Make sure we don't get anybody that slips off into them unnoticed. And uh, that's it. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions? Okay, still pretty quiet. Um, thank you very much. And um, USD 500, Edwin, do you have any updates for us? Yes, thank you, Andrea. 
I just have a few updates. Um, as some of you may know, our school board uh, this week uh, on Tuesday, during the uh, regular uh, board meeting, approved the administration's health and safety reentry plan. Um, there's been a lot of questions about the masks. We will continue with our uh, requirement of masks on all of our school campuses. Some people are asking whether or not the district has the authority to require masks. And as a governing body, our uh, Board of Education does um, have that authority to mandate that. Just as any business, you know, has the authority to, you know, no shirt, shirt no service, um, businesses can also require uh, their patrons to wear masks. So as you just heard the update from Kay earlier, you know, when you think about the variant, we just want to ensure the safety, the health and safety of, of our students, our parents, our staff, and all of those people who visit our school campuses. And again, we will review this. We're starting the school year off this way. Hopefully, if we get this variant under control, maybe that will change. So we will continue to review that. Hold on just one second. I'm sorry. I got to open my door here. Sorry about that. The other thing I have is that we just announced that the hiring of our associate superintendent, uh, Dr. Judith Campbell, uh, will begin her first day on the job, August the 1st. Also, Kay mentioned the upcoming vaccination event. I just want to say again, that's going to be on Tuesday, July the 27th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at J.C. Harmon. Um, we are also hosting career fairs. So it would be, um, we have one coming up July 28th at uh, Gloria Willis Middle School from 3.30 to 6.30. And that information is also on our website. Preschool enrollment is now open. We want parents to know that uh, now is the time to get their child enrolled in preschool if they haven't already done so. And we have information for them to, uh, that they can access on our website for the requirements to enroll their child. That's all that I have and thank you all for your time. Great, thank you very much. Is there any questions for Edwin? Edwin? Um, I just, Edwin, I'm sorry, forgot. Janie, go ahead. <laughs> Edwin, you forgot to talk about the first day of school. Go ahead, you can mention it <laughs> right ahead. Um, staff will re start reporting back August the 2nd our new staff and, uh, and on the 5th, all of our returning staff. But on August the 11th is our first day back at school for our kindergarten through fifth graders and our sixth and our ninth graders. And then on August the 12th, all of our kids will be back on campus. And we're all looking so forward to having our kids back in person this year. It's, it's an exciting time. Uh, we have principals and admins back in 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 uh, professional development now, preparing for our kids being back. And as uh, Edwin shared with us, our mitigation procedures and stuff, they're going through all of those things to share with teachers when they come back next week. And we we're, we're just all excited about our kids being back. And we encourage you to to check out the website, like Edwin said, for the career fairs, but also please, like Kay and Ashley shared, encourage your neighbors and family to show up at the vaccination events and get vaccinated. Like they said, we need to protect our youngest children. They do not have a vaccine for them yet. And they are about 50% of our school's population. And we want to keep our kids in school so they have the opportunities to learn in person from our teaching staff. And to do that, we have to be vaccinated and protect them. So please show up and protect our kids. That's it. I just, and welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much. I think Kay had a question. Oh, yes, Kate. Well, um, I have a comment. First of all, um, I want to thank the Kansas City, Kansas School District um, for providing um, school supplies this year. Um, that, you know, for, for those of you who don't know that, 
um, they are providing that service and it is just an incredible service and it certainly is not countywide that that's happening so I wanted to just give them kudos for that and uh, I did want to also mention uh, in preparation for the start of uh, this uh, school year at KCK um, we are also uh, um, scheduling a vaccination event for custodians, for nutritional, for the nutritional staff as well. So we are really trying to hone in on the classified staff to make sure uh, that they are vaccinated and that they are able to uh, be at those bus stops in the morning to pick up kids and uh, and take care of folks in the cafeteria. So we we are not just looking at the kids in KCK. We want to give the, the staff uh, every opportunity to be successful as well. Thank you, Kay. Great, thank you. And um, Edwin, I think we had a question about masks and I just reiterated, I think what you just said a little bit ago that they are required on all, um, USD 500. Yes, campuses. and then they will also be required on uh, our buses as well. Okay, great. Until Thank you. further notice. Thank you. Um, and I know this isn't on our agenda, but I thought, um, Ashley, if you would like to, I know that you might have a few updates for the UG that have not been mentioned yet. So um, if you'd like the opportunity to give those updates, that'd be great. I would love to. Thank you so much, Andrea, for the opportunity. Um, two major ones. Uh, next Thursday is a busy night with the commission. It is an opportunity for you to weigh in on funding priorities in a very uh, in, impactful way. So we have our community action plan, uh, which is an annual plan that looks at things like our CBD, CGBD funds and things like that. Um, that has a public hearing at 7 p.m. in front of the commission to adopt an upcoming action plan. So really important to come in and weigh in on various programs that are funded through our community development uh, department. And then there's a second hearing that evening as well, looking at our American Recovery Plan Act funds and how the local recovery funds will be directed. So this is where the federal government has handed uh, um, uh, allocated money to us as an organization to help us catch up and recover from the pandemic. And we want the community to start weighing in on how we prioritize those funds. So there'll be a public hearing next Thursday at 7 p.m. on these issues. And it'll be the kind of a kickoff of a series of activities that you can engage and provide input on as a community. So I will uh, put some more information about that uh, in the chat and hope that everyone will be able to attend. Next week, we're also launching a website to support the local recovery fund and um, solicit more input from you uh, mm -hmm. as our community to help us understand where your priorities are and where there's the greatest need as we address um, post-pandemic recovery. And then the other announcement is a little bit more fun, although uh, I think with the heat coming in this weekend, certainly um, nobody's looking forward to that. We are launching a pop-up splash park program. And this is basically a kit of parts for community organizations um, and neighborhoods to take in and uh, host their own uh, pop-up splash park for uh, neighborhood kids. And essentially, you know, we get a couple of sprinklers and some hoses and a slip and slide, some snacks and, and waters for about 30 people. And the idea is, you know, we know it's hot out there, um, our, our pool is closed, and we wanted to make sure that um, we had opportunities for people to kind of cool down. And with the heat advisory starting this Friday, I think the timing could be any better. Unfortunately, it's going to be hot. So hopefully this will be a great way. So there is I will also post the link on how to apply. There are very limited supplies um, and we are um, prioritized based on greatest need, but certainly um, we're really excited uh, to share these resources with community organizations so that uh, we can help kids cool down during these hot weekends. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, and I will add to that neighborhood leaders, I know that some of you were not able to use your grant funds as intended um, for
for this year or even from last year. So if you like this idea of the kit and um, you're not able to get a kit because there are limited supplies, feel free to use your grant funds to do a similar kind of event for the kids in your neighborhood if you would like to. Um, just make sure when you do your report, you let us know that that's what you used it for and, and that would be totally fine because we understand that some plans have changed due to COVID and um, not all your grant funds were spent the way you wanted. So, um, so just to let you know, feel free to use your grant funds for that if you would like to. Any questions for Ashley? Okay, um, uh, we're going to, oh, Janie, did you have one? I forgot to say something, <laughs> I okay. apologize. Um, we've, the UG, Ashley and them were talking about how much uh, our school district has been publicizing the vaccination events. And I would like to give kudos to Edwin and his department. They received national recognition as a communications department from what was the, the organization, Edwin? It's called INSPRA, National School Public Relations Association. They received a bunch of awards, I can't name them all, for their communications outreach with the community from, the, from their peers because of all they've done the last year in getting communications out to our families in the community. And I just wanted to recognize that. Uh, if we were in person, I would be passing out a piece of paper with all of the information on it, but they have received awards, I believe two years in a row now for their excellence in communications. And they need to be recognized for that because they've been doing an outstanding job. Thank so, you everyone. Thank you, Janie, I appreciate that. <laughs> so it's, I believe there's a thing on our website talking about that, so check it out. If it's not there, Edwin, I'm telling you, you need to put it up there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. No, yeah, that is wonderful. No surprise at all, but wonderful job. Congratulations. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to open it up for announcements, but I really quickly want to let everybody know um, National Night Out Against Crime. Um, you know, we normally do it at the armory. That is not an option. Um, and because of our current um, COVID numbers, um, we're doing something a little different. And so we need your support. On August 3rd, Tuesday, August 3rd, which is the National Night Out Against Crime event date from 4 to 7 p.m., we are doing a drive-by event at the Neighborhood Resource Center, 4953 State. I will share um, the information with everyone. But we are doing a drive through event and we have 150 goodie bags, including your National Night Out Against Crime t-shirt and some other goodies that have been given to us from a lot of the vendors that would normally be at the event. Um, and so we will be giving away goodie bags to the first 150 cars that drive through from four to seven. Livable Neighborhoods is also starting a new yard sign campaign and it is do something good in your neighborhood. So they are signs that say do something good in your neighborhood and it gives our website so people can um, look, uh, to get on our website and find out how they can get involved with their neighborhood group as well as how they can be a good neighbor. So um, look for those signs to be popping up. If you would like a sign, please let us know. Um, we're making sure that all the neighborhood groups have access to the signs. And then um, if we need to order more, we will order more. So um, I'm hoping that we have to do that. Uh, <laughs> so just to let you know, Night Out Against Crime, August 3rd, and the Do Something Good in Your Neighborhood. So um, that will be happening soon. And that's the announcement I have. Anybody else have announcements to make? Andrea, I did forget uh, two things that I wanted to mention. Um, first of all, um, um, and I touched on it, but we do have incentives going on right now at our Kmart site for vaccinations. We have a spin to win initiative. So if you go in and get vaccinated, you can spin the wheel to win a prize. Um, and there are various prizes on there, so I won't go into all of that right now. 
but um, it is definitely worth coming in and getting vaccinated. And we are still offering the $25 gift card to come in and get tested. So um, please feel free to spread the word on that. Um, when, a, a month ago, um, we still we, we had the $25 gift card going on and a lot of folks were coming in to be tested because you know it's $25. Now what we're seeing is a lot of folks that are coming in, yes, they're getting the $25, but they're also exhibiting symptoms of COVID. So that is letting us know that, that uh, COVID is on the rise again. And the other thing I wanted to mention is on Saturday, August 7th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Kmart location, the uh, Kansas City, Kansas Education Foundation is sponsoring a back to school event and they will be handing out backpacks um, so that they can put those school supplies in that the district is offering. Uh, we will also be vaccinating um, uh, folks, uh, kids and their families. And we will also be offering immunizations uh, ahead of school. So if, if you know of anyone, if your grandkids, your neighbors, if, if, if you know of folks who have kids who are behind on their immunizations, this would be a great opportunity for them mm -hmm. to get, uh, uh, get up to date, um, before the start, of, uh, the start of the school year. So thanks. Great. Thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, Janet has an announcement. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. You're fine. <laughs> she had her hand up. <laughs> Hi. So I don't know why my camera's not working, but I am one of the recruiter. <clears throat> excuse me, one of the recruiters at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Um, and so I'm hearing about a lot of events that's going to go um, on in our community. So if you guys need help or want sponsors with anything, we'd love to participate in those events. Um, you can reach out to me and I'll put my email in the chat. Um, and just so everyone knows, we are open and enrolling for the fall. So if you know of anyone who is interested in taking classes and starting, you know, their journey here, um, we'd love to have them. So thank you. Great. Thank you. And Linda from the library. Yeah, just another reminder that uh, summer reading goes till the end of July. We have a really cool uh, backpack for adults and all kinds of books for the kids, along with toys and giveaways. Um, so, you know, come by and uh, take advantage of that. Um, if you're looking for a place to take your kids where it's uh, relatively safe, um, because we're under the school district, the library requires masks also. So I know there are people who I've heard, you know, aren't going to certain locations with their children because they're concerned about the whole mask issue, but uh, people can come and browse around the library and we are enforcing mask rules. Um, and if you're uncomfortable, even with that, we've had a lot of families who still aren't quite ready to get out there. And so we'll deliver your prizes and everything curbside and we're still providing curbside service for uh, those people who are interested in that. Um, and also just so you know that the West Wyandotte Library now has a, an early voting uh, box out in front. So if you're looking for a place to uh, drop your ballot, uh, you can do that here at the West Wyandotte Library in the parking lot. That's all I got, thanks. Great, thank you. Um, Kathy Hainer, I noticed your hand was up. Um, I just put in the uh, chat box there the link for the back to school fair volunteer sign up so we are looking for some volunteers uh, to help with that event mass will be um, um, required and social distancing and and all of that and I think most of the activities are being moved outside now but anyway we are still looking for volunteers so the link is there in the chat or they can contact me. Great, thank you. Any other announcements? Andrea, I was just gonna give a shameless plug for one of our Hazel Grove graduates, uh, Nelson, um, who has made 
lemons out of or made lemonade out of lemons and all of the things that have happened over the last year. So um, he is a great young man. I enjoy following him around town. The lemonade is to die for. So if you're on Facebook, I encourage you to support this now sixth grader um, by liking his Facebook page, sharing his story. I also believe and Edwin can probably tell me right or wrong that he'll be at next week's event as well. And so kudos to him. He just joined the Heartland Black Chamber as the youngest member. Um, and this kid literally makes like $500 an hour at community events selling lemonade. So he really is um, entrepreneurship in action in Wyandotte County. So if you have events, he is a popular by demand person to have. Um, but yeah, really great kid. Um, so I thought I would just share that with this group and you all um, can share and like and do all of those things that we do in this, this century. Thanks, Rachel. Great story. Great. Thank you. Support it's funny, team. Rachel, though, because last it, last month's meeting, Mark Dupree was carrying on about him, too. So he's, he's getting some really you know, good <laughs> community fans, that's for sure. Okay, well, great. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, everybody, thank you so much for today. And I don't see him right now, but um, go do something good in your, oh, there you are, Paul. Go do something good in your neighborhood. And if you would like a sign, let me know. Thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm.